General Jack Keane joins me now. General, is America's military prepared to take on the global challenge? Well, first of all, let me just uh, commend you for what that synopsis you just provided, because I think it's incredibly accurate. I've been on a congressional commission looking at the United States defense strategy for over 18 months. And our fundamental conclusion is that we're in a period of time where the threats that you just mentioned, China, Russia, North Korea, and Iran, are the most serious and the most dangerous we've faced since World War II. And the reason is they're co collaborating and cooperating together. They've become considerably more aggressive, and you just gave examples of that aggression. And why is that? Why are they more aggressive? Because they believe there's a lack of will in the United States to confront them because we're focused inward. And secondly, they know full well there's been erosion of U.S. military capability. And we're not as dominant a force as we used to be because we spent 20 years in the 9-11 wars and we have not resourced the military properly since we started to wind down. So those are major issues out there facing this president and the future president in dealing with these threats. And, and it's obvious they are more aggressive. And the administration, the problem I have with it and our commission has, they won't come full clean with the American people how serious and dangerous th these threats are. And I think the likely reason they're not doing that is because the American people say, well, what are you going to do about it? Mm. And that would change a lot of their political objectives in terms of how they're resourcing and spending money in terms of social programs, entitlements, and other things out there. So, yes, I'm delighted you brought that up. This is the most serious issue, I believe, facing the United States, is our own security. Uh, next one, General. Iran's uh, Khomeini has reportedly ordered a direct attack on Israel because of the assassinations. What is our role? What's America's role? If that happens, do they need a lot of help from us? Well, the last time the United States organized a coalition, our commander in the region, General Eric Carella, who commands Central Command, organized that coalition with other countries and ourselves, largely to deal with the drones that were coming uh, during that attack, but also uh, with some uh, missiles themselves. And we did play an important role in supporting Israel. I would, I would assume that we would play that role again if the Iranians are going to conduct a, an attack in kind. Now, I think the Iranians will likely make some adjustments. Those drones took so many hours to get to Israel, you know, because of the sheer distances involved, that we were well prepared for them and virtually shot down every single one of them, uh, except those that failed. So I, some adjustment will be made by the Iranians. And they, listen, they have choices here. Uh, they can bring their proxies into this as well to support them. They can do it exclusively themselves. They can look for a target uh, in the region or outside the region to, to, to kill diplomats and Israeli diplomats that are maybe in another country. The problem with that is that's a terrorist operation, and it usually takes months to plan something like that with, you know, very precise intelligence. I would suspect they'll use conventional weapons here uh, and conventional means to do something in terms of retaliation against Israel. But I do believe, Stuart, that Israel and U.S.-led coalition will be prepared to deal with it. Uh, General, last one real fast. The Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gerskovich and Marine veteran Paul Whelan are part of a big prisoner exchange with the Russians. What do you think the Russians are getting in this deal? They must be getting quite a lot because those are two high-profile prisoners that are coming back home. Yeah, I mean... First of all, let's credit all the negotiators and diplomats involved in this. This is some of the most complex, sensitive negotiations to go in, regardless of who is in power in the United States. And, and the thing to look at this, I mean, you can't look at it from an equality and a fairness thing, because it won't be. I mean, we're getting good people back who've done nothing wrong, and we're giving them people who are guilty of doing a whole bunch of things yep. that are wrong. Yep. So it's good and bad, and it's not a, it's not a fair deal. That's, that's but what does Putin want out of this? I think he wants his guys home, you know, that have been doing these bad things for him, to shore up the fact that, you know, I, I'm protecting you, I'm getting you home. You know, he's dependent on his security forces around him, 
And there's the elites around him to stay in power. And a war is being protracted that he didn't think was going to be protracted. His economy is suffering to a certain degree as a result of that. I think we just lost the people are being asked to sacrifice. So that's the issue. Okay, let, let's just celebrate the return of two good people to the United States. General, thanks very much for being with us this morning. Always a pleasure. Thank you, sir.